So now that we know what a vector is, let's get on to the business of actually being able to use them. Uh, first and foremost, the most important thing uh, here not to forget, it seems like, uh, potentially it seems like anyway, forever since the last time we've uh, introduced a new include here, uh, but because we are in fact uh, using a different um, part of the libraries, uh, we do need to include it. Uh, so we do need to add the uh, very top of our includes list or someplace in our includes list anyway uh, include vector so that the um, the header file that works with it will be included as part of um, your program now that we have our include uh, we can start to the business of actually declaring our vectors if you look at 430 uh, in the text we can see a couple of examples of declaring vectors there uh, first and foremost, we need to use vector, uh, and then inside of the angle brackets, uh, so uh, that would be less than and greater than, uh, we would need to have the declaration type. So this would be string, this would be character, this would be integer, double, short, everything uh, we've been using uh, is something uh, that uh, a vector will take uh, as an argument there. Um, outside of that, um, the, the very first example we have uh, is simply the name of the vector, in this case, numbers. What you'll notice there is we do not have to declare how large the vector is because, again, um, the environment is going to take care of the size of our vector for us. Um, you'll notice the, the second example there, we give it a starting reference point, 10. Uh, so that means to start off with, we're going to provide... Uh, just a, a little fraction of knowledge that the compiler and the runtime environment can use. Um, but really, it's only a starting size. Uh, whatever it is that you end up with is not necessarily indicative of the size of the vector that you started out with. So as we're going through and declaring vectors, uh, there are going to be instances where you want to populate your vector with some default values. Uh, these default values are going to be up to you. Uh, it gives you a starting reference point for, um, you know, just just what it is that you want to populate a vector with. Uh, so if I want, uh, just for testing sake, uh, I want to, as this has suggested, um, start a vector of integers called numbers, and I want, for whatever reason, all 10 of those numbers uh, to be the number 2. Um, we would do, as you see on the bottom of page 430 there, um, so vector uh, inside of the angle brackets, again, is our declaration type, in this case, integer, um, our vector name, numbers, and then inside of parentheses. Now, uh, these are not brackets. Uh, it is parentheses. This is part of the standard template library, so these are rules you do have to follow here. Uh, inside of the parentheses um, is a, first and foremost, uh, comes a size declaration, so how big you want your vector to be. In this case, it's 10. Uh, comma uh, means that it's going to take another argument, uh, and that is going to be um, uh, an initialization value. So here, too, uh, I'm not suggesting that that's a particularly great idea, um, but if you have a specific reason, uh, let's say in testing um, you want it to become clear uh, that you, know, you have declared and initialized a vector to be all uh, characters and you all want the the exclamation character so that if something goes wrong we see exclamation points um, so you could do so I'm again not suggesting you have to um, but for reasons of testing this may become uh, you know necessary if there's any reason that you uh, determine that yeah through the course of normal operations of this program this is what we're going to want to see that's perfectly okay the, again as a developer that's going to be up to you uh, we're telling you that that's okay um, as uh, we kind of continue on down here on 430 um, we can also initialize one vector uh, to contain the values of another vector uh, so if you are doing a copy if you are um, you know, and my suggestion is anytime it is that you uh, are taking a data structure, so whether or not it's a file uh, or a vector or an array, uh, and you are going to do anything like erase things, it is always my suggestion to make a copy of that uh, and actually build uh, programmatically and algorithmically, actually build a test when you are done to ensure that nothing else has happened. Um, I cannot tell you how many times, how many projects I've been involved in uh, where either myself uh, or somebody else in the team has accidentally removed 
you know, a, a range of um, uh, values for whatever reason from a file. Uh, if we are deleting customers who are no longer current uh, and we have, you know, made a mistake on the day for that, this is a huge uh, problem. Uh, so anytime you're looking to delete things, anytime you're looking to change things, always make sure that you give your way or yourself rather a way to get back out in case you have dug yourself into uh, some sort of a problem. Um, so here with vectors, if you are going to do some kind of erase or copy, uh, it's my suggestion uh, that you simply create another vector uh, that is initialized with the values from the vector that you're, you're expecting to delete things with so that if pandemonium uh, happens to ensue, you can always go, ah, crap, that was scary. Uh, and go back and get your copy vector and just keep going on with your life as if you still are going to be employed tomorrow, which hopefully you still will be. On the flip side of our previous example, uh, on 431, if you wanted to um, use an initialization list with your vector, so um, if you know that you want to read, um, for whatever reason, the values 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up through 100, uh, into your vector and essentially use it the same way that we would uh, in array. Um, this makes sense programmatically. Again, this makes sense as far as the overhead and the overall kind of efficiency of your program goes. Let the environment do what the environment is going to do. Um, that's perfectly okay. Uh, the only difference we would have there, you can see it kind of in the middle of 431, uh, is that you would actually have uh, a set of braces to enclose your comma separated list of values. Um, so uh, instead of having the parentheses like we saw in the previous example, uh, we would have braces here. And what that's going to do uh, is let the environment know uh, that these are the values being loaded into there as opposed to uh, if you just had two values that you wanted to load into there, uh, one being uh, the, the vector size and the other one being the initial uh, value or the um, initial uh, initialization of those values. Keeping with the theme of treating a vector like an array, if you want to read values into uh, a vector in the same way that you would have previously in an array, uh, you can absolutely do that. Uh, if we look at 432, it's essentially lines uh, 20 through 25. Um, we are reading hours worked uh, and pay rate into two vectors. Um, these are going to be paired vectors. Uh, so essentially the employee that is in the element zero of vector one is going to have the hours and pay rate in the same element of both vectors. So this way, uh, as we're kind of traversing through the vectors as long as we do them in tandem. So if we do them both together, um, what essentially I'll do is uh, build an you know employee record in this way. So if I have um, instead of paired, I would have uh, three vectors that always go together: employee name, hours worked, and pay rate. Uh, as long as I use them all uh, in the same uh, looping structure, I will read in or out their data at the same rate, uh, and essentially I can create a, a much more complicated, um, essentially, record structure uh, in so doing. Uh, but you'll notice uh, on line like number 22 on page 432, uh, I'm taking a CEN uh, hours uh, and then at index, so I'm treating this vector exactly the same way as I would an array. Uh, that index is controlling the element number that I am reading uh, these values into. Uh, then again, on line number 25, I'm taking a CN of pay rate at that index value, so that value will be stored in that element. Um, and, and if we do uh, nothing different, if we never treat a vector uh, for reading values in or reading values out any differently than we do an array, uh, you are going to be successful in using vectors. That's how closely related they are, which is fantastic. In that same vein, moving on to 433, uh, we can use a range-based for loop to traverse our way through a vector either to, uh, well, in this case, really, it is uh, to read out the numbers. Uh, so we have that int val, so that is um, essentially controlling our iteration and the value that uh, is going to be read in from our vector uh, and then um, 
the colon and then numbers. So numbers again is the name of our vector. Uh, so because a vector knows its own size, uh, I'm going to be able to traverse my way through this array uh, without having to make any kind of statement as to how big the vector is. Uh, so for this particular example on 433, uh, there's only five elements in that array. Uh, could we do this feasibly um, with a, uh, a traditional for loop? Yeah, absolutely. But what happens when we're you know well past that? We have far exceeded the the the, the total count of elements that we expected. Uh, how am I going to be able to deal with that? Well, I use a vector. Uh, so I am simply adding you know more and more and more elements uh, to the tail end of the vector and I never as a developer have to be specifically made aware of the size of the data set that I'm reading in uh, so again I'm treating a vector the same way I am in array but I'm getting all this additional benefit of not having to be specifically aware as a developer the size of the the um, the data set which is fantastic Cruising along and batting cleanup on 439. Uh, can you clear a vector? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a function built in for that, uh, and that is the name of your vector dot clear, uh, and then an empty set of parentheses. Uh, again, that is going to go back to your standard template library uh, and retrieve the clear function. Um, just a little bit of a note here. Um, there is a similar sounding function called erase. Um, it is another one of these public mem member functions, which means it is available to any and all uh, functions that you develop um, using vector. So it's a um, it's a part of that standard template library. Um, erase. Uh, you can select a range of elements to uh, essentially clear out uh, to erase to remove. Uh, from your vector, whereas clear actually clears the content of the entire vector. So if I know for whatever reason that I want to erase elements 10 through 20, I would choose erase, uh, whereas clear is going to get rid of the contents of the entire array. It's not necessarily something you're going to walk into all the time, um, but built into the standard template library gives you, um, you know, kind of that, that granular function that you really want. Uh, on one hand, if I just want a range to go away, you can do that with erase. If you want the whole thing to be uh, essentially cleared, use clear. That's the way I remember it. Um, and finally, finally, batting cleanup here, uh, you can see on table 7.4, uh, that's on page 442, um, any and all of the rest of the member functions that would be necessary for you uh, here for class. I can tell you that certainly this is not a an all-inclusive list of uh, the public member functions for vector. Uh, actually what I'll do is I'll put a C++ um, tutorials uh, link right under this podcast for you so you can see um, you know just how many of them there are uh, and what they might do. Um, but essentially uh, as far as we're concerned here with the class uh, everything you see there on page 442 and 443 uh, is all you're going to need um, for us to be successful. Uh, so for this portion of the podcast, what I'm telling you is treat a vector like you would a an array, and you're going to be in pretty good shape.